Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, and it looks like we have a full house, a full virtual house today. So again, thank you for joining us. So as San Francisco, the nation and the world emerged from this uh, pandemic, people are eager to reconnect, to travel and to create new memories. Uh, so the city by the bay is known as a beacon of diversity, equity and inclusion. And Alaska Airlines is proud to be launching this celebration, showcasing our neighborhoods. This is the fourth of six forums highlighting some of the official cultural districts of San Francisco. So stay tuned for the next, uh, the next dates. Today's forum is the Latino Cultural District during Hispanic Heritage Month. In today's program, we will hear from five local leaders who will paint a high level picture of the special neighborhood and the role their organization plays in preserving and promoting the district. So let's get started. My name is uh, Vas Quineris. I am a small business advocate here in San Francisco. And as an immigrant from Greece, I am all too familiar with the uh, challenges and successes of running a small business. I actually grew up in the back of my father's grocery store on Bryant and Cesar Chavez back in the day. And every day I would take the bus from uh, Daly City to my father's store. My desk was actually a stack of Coke cans and a stack of beers. And I would do it in the back of the store when I wasn't helping out in the front of the store. So that was my early experience, early experience with uh, small business. And since then I had a design store in the Fillmore for 25 years. And about five years ago, I closed it happily to focus on the small business advocacy work that I do now. And um, relatively recently, uh, I co-founded this uh, organization, this uh, agency think tank called NextSF. And basically we create private public partnerships to promote small business and the neighborhood corridors of San Francisco. Um, now, today I'd like to welcome you to our Latino Cultural District Forum, which has been so sponsored by Alaska Airlines. Uh, in this program, we are presenting a curated collection of organizations that are helping to make the community thrive. Uh, a cultural district, by the way, is an area within San Francisco that embodies a unique heritage and receives financial support from San Francisco. Each district is defined by its residents and cultural and historical contributions to the city. For example, these districts may have locally owned businesses, music venues, colorful murals, and festivals which define a cultural district. So before we start our program, we have a few housekeeping rules. Today's webinar is being recorded. So if you miss something, um, you can check our YouTube channel. Um, it's also being broadcast on Facebook Live right now and uh, expect to get a uh, recording uh, with the follow-up thank you email to all of the attendees today. So it's been over a year and I know you're all proficient on this Zoom platform. So you know what to do. If you have a question while the speakers are speaking, please drop it in the Q&A section and we will ask the question at the end of the program. Um, and we encourage everyone to tweet and repost our forum and use the social handles that, uh, that represent our organizations today because we all need the support, so thank you. So, okay, now, so sit back, enjoy your favorite beverage and let's start the program. I'm proud to present my friend Franco Finn, Head of External Affairs, Community and Engagement at Alaska Airlines. He is a man about town and an all around Renaissance man who wears many hats. So welcome to the stage, Franco. Thank you, Voss. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy, happy, uh, what is it, uh, Tuesday, right? Is it? <laughs> We're, what day of the week is it? Well, it's all good. You're tuned into the right day of the week because we have our fourth installment of our amazing cultural districts web webinar. And so very excited uh, to be here on behalf of Alaska Airlines, of course, one of my many hats, but I love this job so much because uh, we are all about the community. We've been about the community since day one. You know, we've been an airline since 1932, uh, started in the state of Alaska and spread its wings uh, through the Pacific Northwest and now California, which is my territory and specifically the Bay Area. But what I love most about Alaska is that we've always been with the community since day one, despite fires, pandemics, disasters, you name it. We've always been there uh, 
And that's who our DNA is at Alaska Airlines. We are truly an airline that cares. And it starts with the people, the small businesses in the community. So we believe in small businesses. And this is special to me because I'm actually born and raised in San Francisco, St. Luke's Hospital. Many of you may know St. Luke's Hospital uh, around the area, but I grew up in the Mission Excelsior District and area. And so this has been on my calendar for a long time. I remember the streets, you know, walking up and down. I used to live on 26th and Valencia and I used to live all over uh, the mission. And I got to tell you, it's just so th thriving with, with just, you know, culture, diversity of every background too. And it's, you know, some of my favorite restaurants are there. We're going to hopefully get some sneak peeks about that. But, uh, you know, Alaska is very proud to partner with Next SF. And uh, we're going to be giving away a pair of two tickets to some lucky winner at some point at the end, right? And so stay tuned, make sure, be uh, present to win, and hopefully you'll get two tickets anywhere Alaska flies. And we have been expanding to many locations. We're expanding to three new locations in Mexico, as a matter of fact, uh, Ixtapa, Loreto, and Mazatlan. And also we have Belize in the fall among other locations. So hopefully it inspires your leisure travel whenever you decide to fly, whenever you feel safe. We do take our next level care safety to the next level, making sure we have 100 measures that uh, ensure your safety when you are flying on Alaska Airlines. We're going to have a little bit of fun with an Alaska video in just a little bit, but just to share um, you know, my personal connection with the mission. I love, like I said, how vibrant and diverse it is. I just remember as a kid walking down the streets and there were like markets and you know stores and restaurants and vendors everywhere. It was, it's still like this to this day. The pandemic hasn't slowed things down. Our neighborhoods are thriving, especially in the mission. And I'm also proud to say that I too am a small business owner myself and have a little piece of the mission actually called the Bruvino on 24th and Petrero right there, uh, right on uh, Calle 24. So it's very, very cool to me to have a piece of that. And it means a lot to me and my wife as well. Uh, that we are a part of that neighborhood and uh, a neighborhood that I grew up and have such fond memories with. Uh, but we're happy to be here as a presenting sponsor and hope that you are inspired by uh, some of our amazing panelists and speakers here today. We are uh, really blessed with the presence of some such great leaders from this district. And we're going to bring it alive, bring it to color as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month and, of course, all the diversity that the mission has to offer. So with that said, I do have a very special video to hopefully inspire you to travel wherever you may be, wherever you, your next destination is down the road. Uh, Dominic, cue it up. Here's a little fun safety dance. We can fly where you want to. We can leave your house behind. But if your friends don't mask and why don't they mask? Well, they won't fly this airline. You can fly if you want to, because we do safety right. We have air that's clean and disinfectant machines zapping germs like an arcade space bike. And we dance to the, the dance, dance, to the, the dance, dance, have the filters cleaning commence. Alaska safety dance, Alaska safety dance. I love that. It just gets me in the mood. And uh, we actually aired that uh, at the Super Bowl, which was a big Super Bowl ad uh, earlier this year of 2021. And so hopefully that inspires you. To fly safely, next level care, like I said, on Alaska. Like I said, two round trip tickets anywhere Alaska Airlines flies. And so with that said, let's just ask a little travel possibly inspired questions. We have a few polls throughout our webinar to kind of keep us engaged. And so let's survey our wonderful group here and please answer, uh, you know, to your best. And let's share with the world here what you think. Here's a question. If you could travel this fall to any of Alaska's newest routes, I mentioned to you some of them, where would you go? Laredo, Mexico, Mazatlan, Mexico, Ixtapa, uh, or Belize, Central America, which is really exciting for us, these new destinations. All right, give you a few seconds. Click where you would love to go next if you would like to travel soon. All right, I'm going to answer myself. Okay, let's vote. And let's take a look. I had a feeling we wanted to go far, far away. <laughs> well, the answer is Belize. You better Belize it. It's, uh, <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Uh, looks like 
would like to go to Centro America, which is fabulous. But close second, we've got, well, not a close second, but Mazatlan, absolutely. And then we have Ixtapa and then Loreto. So very cool. Hopefully it inspires you to go to your next destination. I am proud to say that Alaska Airlines is the number one nonstop West Coast uh, airline that gets you from here to Mexico of any domestic airline. So we are just growing and we cannot wait to visit more leisure destinations so you can get on a sandy beach or you know, sip a pina colada or whatever that may be. So anyways, back to you, Voss. Hopefully that inspired a little bit of travel fun. Thank you, Franco. I know I'm inspired. So by the way, um, our, to our guests, please hang on. We're going to be giving away the two round trip tickets at the end of the program. You need to be present to win. And you know what? If you attend all six of these webinars, and a lot of you have um, have attended all of the, you know, the uh, forms that we've been doing so far, so um, definitely, definitely uh, enjoy that. We'll be giving away two uh, first class uh, tickets as well if you attend all six forms. Um, so that'll be announced at the last uh, form that we have. Okay, so now, uh, before we begin with our panelists, we'd like to present a very short video highlighting the Latino Cultural District and also our panelists as well. So Dominic, take away. So that was a nice uh, teaser video. Hopefully we have whet your appetites to go and explore uh, the Mission District. And even if you think you know it, you don't know it because our panel of experts, they're gonna tell you what's up, what to do and where to go and what to eat. Uh, so um, by the way, thank you, Dominic, beautiful video. Uh, so first up, we've got Susana Rojas. She is a longtime community leader in the district. And she's also the executive director of Calle 24 Latino Cultural District. Uh, by the way, just wanna thank you for helping me curate this amazing all-star uh, panel uh, that we have here today. So thank you again and take it away, Susana. Thank you, Vaz. Um, thank you everyone for coming tonight, uh, today to listen a little bit about the Latino Cultural District. As Vaz said, I'm, my name is Susana Rojas and I'm the Executive Director for Calle 24. I've been the Executive Director for the past year and a half. Um, and I'm very excited and honored of being able to serve our community from this lens. I, um, I've been in the mission community for 28 years and plan to continue to be in the mission community for as long as I can, I can as long as my legs um, serve me, I will be here. Um, I I have a lot of different favorite spots, so we'll not we're not gonna start with that. What what I will start with is the reason why I love the mission so much. I um, I immigrated from Colombia. I first immigrated to New York, where I became a single mother, and then I I moved to San Francisco, where I found home. And the first place that I came uh, uh, when moving to San Francisco was the Mission District, and I immediately I fell in love with the colors, the smell, the music, the señoras at the corner talking, the belote at the corner. I just I just knew I was home. And I know that when people come to our district, that's what they will experience. And what we want people to get away um, feeling that they are home, that they have a home away from home that represents the Latino culture and really immerse in the Latino culture, immerse in the cuisine, in the music, in the language, in the colors. 
and, and in the way that we are, right? Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I love the mission. Um, one of the areas that I love going to whenever I want a quick bite and, and I really, I'm just looking for that family cooking and for that love when you first come in is Doña Teres Market. It's on, on 21st and Florida. You go and you order a plate of flautas and you get a, hello, mija, how are you? How was your day? How's your family? With that, with that food, then I also... When I want something bigger, I will come down to the 24th Street Corridor. Um, I like going to Tio Chilos. I like going to La Palma. I love the tortas a los picudos. So there's never really a, a place where you can go and not get it, um, really good food. We have all kinds of food on my, one of our panelists will talk a little bit more about our businesses and our restaurants. Um, also come to, um, to Presida Ice and book one of the tours and look at our beautiful murals. Our history is on our walls. Our, when you walk out and you see the beautiful murals that depict our history and our, our current situations and things that we as Latino community, the Latino community feel and have to endure or have to um, share with other people, they are painted on our walls. And so come and enjoy one of those. You wanna learn how to swim, go to Garfield Park. We have a brand new, a brand new pool with classes and, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, also, you can come to, um, to any of our parks uh, in, the, in the mission. The one thing that we are asking, as many of you may know, the, the Latino community was the most affected by COVID-19 during the pandemic. We are recuperating, we are resilient, we are seeds. And, but we're asking anybody that comes to our, our cultural district to please be respectful and, and take care of our community. Please wear your mask, please be, bring your vaccination card to go into our businesses and please uh, treat our, our essential workers with the love and respect that they deserve. Also, if you love our artesanías and you love colorful decorations for your home, please come in and um, go to Miss Guatal, or you can go to Luz de Luna, where you can find beautiful, beautiful um, artesanía from our different countries. All the way from Peru to Mexico, you, you will see a represented there. We have jewelry, we have clothes, you name it, you can find it in the mission. So we hope to welcome you soon. Um, we hope that you can enjoy and learn a little bit more about our culture. And like I said before, please come with kindness and respect. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you. And I know there's some great organizations on the mission, but really Calle 24 is the, um, is the organization that, that really is the glue of the community. And so much of your community, the residents and the merchants look to Calle 24 for guidance and resources, and especially the merchants for um, exposure opportunities as well. So thank you for everything that you do for the community. Uh, so next up is my new friend, uh, George Barahona. Um, he's, I think he's new to the mission, but he's, uh, he's digging his roots in there as we speak. So um, George is actually the community marketing liaison for Calle 24. So take it away, George. All right, thank you, Vas. And thank you, Susana. I really like that introduction, it was beautiful. All right, so my name is, as Bas said, my name is George Barahona. I'm the marketing liaison here at Calle 24. And I actually started my career here in the mission a few years ago, back in uh, 2017, 2018. I actually started working here as a freelance uh, journalist for uh, El Tecolote, also known as Acción Latina, which is one of our district's legacy businesses. And because of the skills I've learned here in the mission at, at El Tecolote, working here closely with the community, I was able to kickstart my career. Um, I also want to talk about um, why I love this place, um, Mission Calle 24. It's full of so much diversity and community and has so much to offer, which is why I'm stoked to be uh, representing this area. It's a beautiful corridor with many mom and pop businesses as Susana and Vas kind of mentioned. And it's a place where there's so many hidden gems. You, you can't believe it. There's too many to even like list off. So you won't be able to just find it just by typing in Mexican restaurant, right? You think of Calle 24, you think of that, but no, there's so much more. If you type in, you, you gotta just type in Calle 24, okay? And we're gonna talk about all the different diversities of the, of the restaurants they have here. So for example, we have Mexican Tio Chilos, 
We have Peruvian, we have Salvadorian, like Paraiso Cafe, Sunrise Cafe. We even have Spanish here, the Tapas. We have uh, Cubano and Puerto Rican food, El Nuevo Puerto de Landia. We even have Middle Eastern food like La Hope Bohem. And there's so many different places to come and eat here, right? And Susana also mentioned that there's other places like uh, arts and crafts, like Luz de la Luna and Miscotal. There's so many things that you can find here. And you can also find a lot of the things that we do as a community to help out. We have little mini Frida. We have, little, we have these all over the, I know it's hard to see. Yeah, <laughs> you can't really see it, but it's a Frida Kahlo with a mask. And we've uh, decided to put, uh, to share this and put it in front of every restaurant. Um, basically, we're trying to keep our safety here in the mission and make sure everyone can have a good time and, you know, st uh, help prevent the spread of COVID-19. So what we did is we have these little Fridas and they have information on, you know, basically, if you want to come in and eat, you got to wear a mask. And I also want to talk about our legacy businesses here in the Latino Cultural District. Uh, we have a few of them, just such as Adobe Books, Presida Ice, like Susana mentioned, Dance Brigade, Dance Mission Theater, uh, Acción Latina, uh, Galeria de la Raza, and 24th Street Dental. But on top of these businesses, you can find more of these out in the greater mission, like the lab and Oddbod Films. And so what I've done as the marketing liaison and the rest of our group, we started a new way to help reach out to others about our, our cultural district. We have a lot of food, like I mentioned. So we started a new series called Comiendo en la Calle. So for example, I go to, a, uh, let's say I went to Sunrise Cafe, which I did. It's gonna be representing Salvadorian food. I go in there and we just check it out and we just share the cool, amazing things about the restaurant and how you have the little Fritas in there. And we, we, like I said before, we don't just have Mexican and Salvadorian. It's all over the place. There's, like I said, it's throughout the whole America. And, Speaking of Americas, we're, I'm going to talk about Fiestas de Americas. Um, not only did uh, my man Rodrigo, he's a part of the panel here, uh, not only did we assist him with Carnival, but we also decided to do a pop-up virtual one where we went around the area and we actually went to a lot of these businesses that I mentioned. We went by Presida Ice, MCCLA, House of Breaks, Gava 22. We went in front of these famous restaurants and we shared uh, a lot of comparsas, uh, basically dancers, and we kind of, we went live, we made a video that's coming out soon, and we just kind of showcased what Calle 24 is, not just for the restaurants, but for the communities, the businesses, and everything we have to offer here, and like I said earlier, I can talk about this all day, so <laughs> I'll leave it at there, and I'm happy to be able to share some of these amazing restaurants and activities and things we can do here in the Mission, in Calle 24. Thank you, George. Hey, I was going to ask if people are interested in learning more, staying connected with the district, what social media handles would you uh, recommend? And we can also put them in the, in oh, the yeah. chat section here as well for the audience. So right now, our website is currently being under constructed, but we are on, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as LinkedIn. You can just look up Guy 24 sf and you can find all our videos. You can find the live streams. You can find our TikTok real styles. So, you know, everyone's on TikTok nowadays. So I've been in charge of tackling all that and making sure, you know, Guy 24 is up to date with, you know, with all the new trends, all the cool restaurants. And we've been able to show a lot of what we've been doing there from, uh, from social media. Guy 24 sf Awesome. And I know George is very attentive on social media. So if you, um, if you tag Calle 24, I'm sure he'll repost your, your uh, post on stories or whatever. So, um, yeah, you know, you're responsible for all this, George. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Give us a tag. Literally tag us, Calle 24. We'll share that on our stories. We'll repost you. You know, we really like to engage on social media and make sure that People are aware of what we're doing here and showing off our amazing restaurants so everyone can know what an amazing place Guy Mr. Cuatro is. Awesome. Yeah, and a lot of these businesses, by the way, there are a lot of um, immigrant, not English speaking businesses. They don't have access to social media. Um, so I know Calle 24 is helping them with that. And we can all help them just by all these guests that are on this program right now. We can all help these businesses. Uh, thrive by posting and sharing because we all have our audience, we all have our social media friends and followers, and we can all help these uh, small businesses that don't have the, the skill set or the resources to have their own accounts. So um, thank you, George. Uh, so before we continue, though, we're going to kick it back to Franco, and he has another fun poll for us. So take it away. All right, Voss, thank you so much. We got another poll just to kind of break things up a little bit and just uh, hear from your opinions. And I know we've been inspired by food, 
uh, and George listed a bunch. Uh, Susana represented listed a whole lot. There is just way too much goodness in the you know Mission District. But I did look at Eater SF, and I asked uh, you know this is just a high level. I wanted to sprinkle kind of a variety. Which Mission District restaurant would you visit next from Eater SF? Suggestions below. And this is just a handful, but I wanted to get a diverse uh, you know kind of like like I said eclectic bunch. Uh, Pokchuk, which is a Mayan cuisine inspired uh, restaurant. If you've never heard of it, take a look at Eater SF. It looks pretty darn amazing from the description. Uh, I had to plug in my Bruvino SF. We're new kids on the block on uh, Calle 24. Uh, pizzas, artisan pizzas, salads, beer, wine, my favorite uh, jalapeno wings there. And we have an Al Pastor pizza that is something unique uh, that's kind of homage to the area. So come check that out, Bruvino SF 24th. And how about this? Filipino American cuisine, Senor Sisig. Their food truck is now a brick and mortar. A very popular San Francisco food truck and now in the mission, which is awesome. Love that. And then of course, a staple and a favorite. A lot of people know it. This is from Eater SF. Uh, tacos, burritos, also the traditional food there. La taqueria. There's just too many, but this just gave a kind of a sample. Just curious. Where would you go to next if you had to explore? based on Eater SF. So go ahead, take a little poll. Let's see what people want to see. And I'm going to predict something and I'm probably going to be wrong. Oh, I was, oh, actually, wow, okay. I was going to think the good old staple La Taqueria because I love that place, it's good too. But wow, we have Pokchuk, which is uh, Mayan cuisine, as they say in the description, but 33%, but a close second is La Taqueria. And then we got Senor Sisig and then Brumino, but that's good. Just a variety, but these are the experts. They're sharing with us some of the hidden gems of the Mission District. So we're gonna learn a lot about food. I, I have a feeling, boss. <laughs> Back to you. All righty. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Franco. <laughs> I'm salivating here. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so next up, we've got uh, my friend, Eric Arguello. He is a legendary community leader who has held many positions in the community. And of course, he's won many, many recognitions as well. And uh, he is the founder and president of Calle 24 Latino Cultural District. So um, take it away, Eric. Uh, thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Franco. Just want to thank you guys for putting this together and, and doing this great service for Latino for the Latino Culture District and all other culture districts in San Francisco. Um, you know, I was raised here in, in the mission from Central America, been here all my life. I have worked closely with a lot of the businesses in the area. My parents were also small business owners, um, you know, in the mission, the restaurant, hair salon, you know, a lot of different uh, ventures through over, uh, throughout the years. Um, one thing I want to talk about is, you know, who we are and how we formed. And, you know, Calle 24 uh, is an urban experiment on cultural preservation. Um, we formed because of displacement and gentrification. We lost about 8,000 residents from 2000 to 2013. So we wanted to figure out how we can preserve uh, the culture here in the mission. Um, and when we talk about the culture and our cultural assets, we're talking about, you know, how we preserve our events, our businesses, our food, our lowriders, our customs, traditions, artists, and people. Uh, these are all things that form a community and keep a community intact. Uh, so we, uh, we are the founders of culture districts. We have around eight now throughout the city. We get calls from across the country to talk about culture district and to look at our model and, 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 and to talk about what we created here. But what I always tell the, uh, different neighborhoods, different people when we talk about culture district is first you have to really uh, uh, look at who you are and be very clear about who you are and and, and really put that out in front. Uh, for Calle 24, you know, we are the birthplace of Latin rock. Um, you know, we have people like Carlos Santana and Malo come out of this neighborhood. We are the birthplace of the mural movement. We have over 260 murals uh, around the neighborhood. It's the largest outdoor public gallery in the country. Uh, we have the highest concentrations of Latino businesses, 75 out of 130 businesses. It's the highest concentration in the city. 
it's the hub it's where a lot of people from all over the country or uh, whether you're an immigrant or not if you want the Latino experience comes to this area uh, we have the highest concentration of cultural and, and Latin event, uh, events like Carnaval, Dia de los Muertos, Paseo Artístico, uh, and many more. Uh, we have the highest number of legacy businesses. We've identified over 30 legacy businesses throughout our cultural district, and some reaching over 100 years old, like the Roosevelt Tamale Parlor. Uh, we have the fastest growing number of Latinx women-owned businesses than any other part of the city, and, and, and it continues to grow. We saw a resurgence of of, of women really taking you know uh, uh, the reins in, in businesses and moving forward and there's a, a lot more coming in the future uh, we also are seeing a resurgence of the lowrider culture with car shows practically in all our events that we have uh, and a lot of the cruises that uh, you know go up and down mission street and 24th street uh, so that's who we are in a nutshell it's a great place to visit if you want to uh, really experience the latino culture this is the place to come. We have a lot to offer. It's a very active, vibrant neighborhood, easy to get to through BART, through, uh, through, through Muni, or you can just walk down. Uh, there's a lot to see. You can spend the whole day, and um, we welcome you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do for the community now, in the past. And you know, we always say that uh, businesses come and go, but it's really culture that sticks. Culture is what binds us together. And as the community, you know, this San Francisco is a community in a transition. It's always been changing. But if we don't know our past, we don't know our future. So culture is really the, the, the glue that binds all of us together. It gives us roots. If we don't have culture, we don't have roots. We're not a tree with roots, deep roots. So thank you again. Thank um, you. Next up, my pleasure. Next up is uh, Tracy Brown Gallardo. Uh, she's also, she also has deep roots in the community as well and spanning over many many years and uh, she's played many roles in the district and today she's representing uh, the mission language and vocational school as the board chair so take it away Tracy thank you what a true honor to be here today with Calle 24 and be asked to speak about the mission the Latino cultural district and what it means to me and what a place it is because I definitely, you know, claim to be part of the mission, but the mission also claims me. So, so for many of us, we may not even have come from the mission, um, but the mission has somehow claimed us, right? And so I will definitely say that I am born and raised mission and I am raising my family in the mission. I have four kids and, I have five grandkids. So Tracy Gallardo, born and raised Mission, um, definitely went to all the schools in the Mission, including Cesar Chavez, Horace Mann, Mission High School, still a Mission Bear, class of 85, I'll age myself. My family came from Guatemala. We settled in the Mission District and that's where we raised our family. I was fortunate enough to be able to get a house. Um, but a little bit about me. Um, you know, I work for a lot of mission CBOs, probably too many to name, but what you know, ones that are near and dear to my heart, Mission Girls, Horizons Unlimited, um, Mission Neighborhood Centers. I then went to the school district and really just fought for our children that are unrepresented and and um, you know, then I got on the board of Mission Language Vocational School because the mission almost lost it. And is if you're a native and you're from the mission and you're from the city, you know this is a ground zero place of organizing. It is the mission city hall. It is the place where you learn English. It is the place where you come get citizenship um, to learn and uh, the place where you find a job and get connected. It is the previous executive director was the very first Latina to be um, put on the board of education and really did a lot to advocate um, for our children. So what does the mission or Latino community mean to me and how has this influenced who I am and who my family are? The mission ever since I can remember was ground zero for organizing. I remember going to events with my mother. She actually got a job through organizing advocacy work. And now my kids, they can all tell you all the events that they've been to since they were little. Um, some of them are fun. They've been in lowriders. We have two lowriders, a 62 and a 
58 and um, we come out in the parades. My kids have drunk for Loco Bloco. My girls have danced for Loco Bloco. Everywhere in the mission, it's about culture. It's about familia. It's something that it, it's a place where you feel just so much a part of. Growing up in the parks, La Raza Park, we had to reclaim that just like we had to reclaim mission language vocational school and save that. We, we claim things in the mission and the mission looks after us and claims so many of us. Um, so whether I was at my grandma's off of 24th and Shotwell or at my mom's house on 20th and Lexington, so many places to go, so many things to see, and so many friends to talk to. It's a place where the neighbors know you and they call your name, they'll call your kids out, they will regulate, and that, that's what we do as a community. So growing up in the mission, you actually don't realize how you're being raised until you leave and look back and you're like, wow. I'm, I'm someplace where they don't care about me. I need to go back. I need that heartbeat. And this is why you're automatically drawn to this. The mission, ground zero for organizing against the injustices. Anytime anything goes wrong, you hit 24th Street, there's going to be advocacy going on. There's going to be protests. We are a community that does not put up with this kind of stuff. And we will come out and, and we will protest. We have learned how to demand things for our neighborhood. And some of you who may not have been raised in the mission, you get claimed by the mission and you join right there with us. We claim you, you're a forever advocate for social justice right alongside with us. Being a native from the mission, we embrace the entire community. We don't discard our people. We don't care who you are. We are going to embrace you. And this is why our small businesses, you can see them always going outside, feeding the homeless. You can see them giving money away. And I remember growing up, the corner stores used to all give our family credits for those of us that didn't have that much money. Um, as a young woman, I was embraced by a powerful community of, of Mission Girls mentors. They tried to groom me for political office, but we all know years later, I'm a diehard advocate. That didn't work. These women were chingonas. They demanded to be heard, demanded to hold space in places where women were not represented. And this has taught me at an early age, the power of the mujer and all that we are committed to do for the mission. It's like our responsibility and mission, almost like a heartbeat. It can't be changed, it beats that way. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, so many of these same women rose into the leadership to address the community needs. We united, we came together for a collective response. We demanded a response that was culturally appropriate and in lines with what we needed to have addressed. The Latino Task Force on COVID-19 was born. It's become a national model, a city model. And so many women are part of that organizing, but also young women. And I wanna shout out the daughters, like my daughter, Susana's daughter. They rose into a leadership position that they were not even yet ready for, but being part of the mission, they were groomed for it. We knew they could do it. And we in the mission, we have a habit of just throwing people into leadership. We even rename our people, our allies. They all have Latino names. When you come to the mission, we have name and ceremonies. Come join us. Um, I want to thank everyone publicly for their work. I want to shout out just my small businesses, um, my families. We, of course, Tracy Gallardo. Yes, we have Gallardo's Mexican restaurant on 18th and Shotwell. Come visit us. And Deanda's. Yes, the Italian bakery. The bakers are Mexican and so are the owners. So please, um, again, in the mission, we raise generations of Mujeres Chingonas. That's what the mission is to me. It's so much more of what you'll hear about our cultural celebrations, our lowriders, our food, our small business. Everything is great, but the biggest thing that the mission does is it gives you a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and a sense of familia. Thank you. Wow, Tracy, I didn't know all that. Thank you for sharing. By the way, uh, even if you are not part of the community, the community does embrace people from other parts of the city as well. And if you're not familiar with some of the foods or the pastries or, you know, when you feel the hospitality, you feel the warmth. Uh, sometimes I'll go into a bakery and I'll ask the owner, what is this? I never had this before. And then, you know, customers are going to tell me their favorites too. Like, oh, you need to try this. And then you need to get that. So it's something very unique to um, the Mission District, I must say. So uh, thank you again for sharing. Um, and finally, we have the fun, fun part, because, you know, three things bring people together, music, food, and art. 
So uh, our next guest is the uh, executive director of Carnaval SF, and uh, he's going to tell us about all the music, which is part of the mission, and yet another reason for people to come and visit. So take it away, Rodrigo. Gracias, Paz. Thank you, everyone. La vida es un carnaval. Life is a carnival. But there's so many layers to carnival. Not only our carnival here, but carnivals around the world. You know, first and foremost, I'm a San Francisco uh, Mission District native. I was uh, raised here, uh, but I had the unique experience as a San Franciscan to go to school throughout the city. So in elementary school, I went to Chinatown. Shout out to Gordon J. Lau. Then I came back to the mission where I went to Horace Mann. Shout out to our dragons. And then I went to the Sunset to Lowell High School. Uh, I left San Francisco um, after high school to San Diego. And then I traveled and I lived and I was, uh, I, I studied in Brazil for a year. And I came back from that experience with a lot of uh, energy and fire to give back to my community through the production of cultural events. And, and I was just fortunate enough that under the wing of uh, Roberto Hernandez, who is the mayor of the mission, I was reintroduced to my Carnival Familia, you know, to be a part of the production team. And I really saw from there on the importance of Carnival, that yes, the aesthetic is aesthetically pleasing. You have the dancers, you have the colors, and you have the feathers. But under, underneath it all, you have so many layers of relationships because Carnival for over uh, 40 years, it has been a nexus that really binds all of the cultural assets that we talked about today. The activists, the businesses, the, um, the uh, storefronts and the murals, they all come together under one house. And since 1978, that house has been Carnival San Francisco. Um, it's the longest running and the largest multicultural celebration on the West Coast with over 400,000 people attending pre-pandemic. But uh, you know, even though that we go through so many different uh, uh, situations as a community and as a city, no matter what, we continue to cultivate and celebrate the diverse Latin American, Caribbean, Caribbean and African diasporic roots of the Mission District and the Bay as a whole. So we're talking about all 23 Latin American countries, the, the Caribbean and many more. And the beauty of Carnival is that you will find like in no other place, folks of the Chinese community dancing samba. And then you'll have African-American brothers dancing cumbia and so on and so forth. And that's the beauty of this multicultural celebration that we engage so many people throughout the year. We have our Mardi Gras celebration in February, the royalty competition in April, and we have our cultural programs that impact our youth and our children in the San Francisco Unified School District. I'm a product of Carnival. I am a Carnival baby. My mom was seven months pregnant on a float wearing her Aztec dance regalia. Because Carnival happens on Memorial Day weekend. I was born in July. So since the get go, you know, I've been exposed to so many different cultures, languages, foods, uh, businesses. And so I'm just really proud to now be the executive director. You know, we engaged 2,000 artists, over 65 dance groups, you know, all the public schools in San Francisco, specifically the Mission District, over 200 businesses and all the city departments. Why am I saying that also? So that you can understand just how interwoven Carnival is in our daily lives. And it's not only when we have it on Memorial Day weekend, but also throughout the year. We are that support system from families that come right now from Central America and South America that need a home, we welcome them. We welcome them and make them feel and understand that they are welcome here, that this, these streets are their streets, that you're more than happy to dance, you're more than happy to sing in your language and in other languages as well, because at the end of the day, we want to plant those seeds in those children so that they can be uh, global citizens and come back and support our community. I do want to say that during the pandemic, we never left. We pivoted. Uh, we pivoted in support of the, with support of the Latino Task Force, and we also create the Mission Food Hub to distribute uh, culturally relevant uh, groceries to families. And what we did was instead create a resource fair during the pandemic, two resource fairs, 
with COVID testing, COVID um, vaccines, uh, job fair, uh, health fair. And so, you know, even though right now we're all in limbo, we're always there and we have been for over 40 years. And in those 40 years, it's been so great because we've had luminaries like Celia Cruz, Carlos Santana, La India, Mark Anthony, and recently Los Tigres del Norte. So we're really looking forward to what the next 10, 15, 40 years are gonna, uh, we're gonna bring to the Mission District, the Latino Culture District, and to all the residents and folks that come to Carnival. I will have to uh, uh, highlight uh, my second home away from home, the Mission Cultural Center for Latino Arts. Right now they have a wonderful exhibition of the 40 years of the Lowrider Council, the Lowrider Culture in San Francisco, and all the other homes that really uh, uh, strengthen and like Vas says, binds our society, which is culture, right? That Ruta, like the Brava Theaters, Dance Mission, Acción Latina, Artillery AG, and Evolve SF, all are great spaces that uh, cultivate and celebrate our cultures and that keep us going because como decimos nosotros, la cultura cura, culture heals. Thank you, everyone. Bravo, Rodrigo, very well said. Thank you for giving us a high level. But whenever you hear a festival in uh, the mission, definitely go there. And by the way, uh, the mission is blessed with some of the best weather in the city. So it may be freezing on the west side, but in the mission, it's always sunny. So uh, I have to ask Rodrigo, if someone is interested in the festivals, events, carnival, what are the social media handles that people can go to? to and then we can drop it in the in the chat section as well. Sure. CarnivalSanFrancisco.org. Find our website on Facebook, Carnaval San Francisco, spelled in Espanol with an A. Uh, on Instagram, Carnival SF, Twitter, and find us on LinkedIn as well, Carnaval San Francisco. Cool. And, and what is the next festival coming up, just so we can be aware? Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. That's right. That's find right. Find Carnival there. Awesome. When is that exactly? That's on November 1st and November 2nd. Got and it. so we're going to pay homage to all of our defuntitos, those have a, that have passed already to the, the other world. We're going to bring them back and we're going to celebrate their life. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Uh, so before we go to the Q&A section, let's do another poll. So take it away, Franco. Yes, and uh, Rodrigo, good to see you, man. I, and it's great, you know, I, I hosted one of the last coffee TV dance parties at uh, with Carnaval and with the theme. It was so much fun. And uh, this was years ago, one of my favorite, favorite events. I did something virtually for last year because we couldn't have the celebration. So I cannot wait till Carnaval gets back. It's the most festive and most fun celebration and festival, I think, in San Francisco. It's a must see everybody uh, who, who's never been before. But anyways, let's go to a poll, another one, and then we're gonna get to our Q and A and then hopefully do our drawing for two round trip tickets anywhere Alaska flies. All right, here's a, just a little fun question about what you wanna do when you uh, get back to normal, whenever that may be, right? Uh, would you go to more restaurants and dine indoors? Are you looking forward to that? Maybe attending more concerts and shows Maybe you want to travel to more leisure destinations, get out of Dodge and just explore and, and visit some places that you've never been uh, before. Or maybe just simply visit with more family and friends that you haven't seen in a year and a half to two years. Let's just pull what everyone's thinking right about now. I know we want to get some festivals back up and running again. That's for sure. Uh, concerts, all that. I mean, gosh, if I could just check all of these, this, that's what I would do. But let's see. All right, travel, that's my kind of crowd. I love it. I think you, you're trying to prime me for these two tickets today. I have a feeling people wanna travel. So 49% say they wanna travel to more leisure destinations. I feel you, I feel stuck. I've been traveling, but I hope you can too. Uh, second was more concerts and shows, hopefully more festivals like Carnaval. Family and friends, of course, very important. And uh, I think we've been dining indoor, outdoor, so restaurants come forth, but good pull. Nice pulse there. Back to you, Vas. 
I would just like to get some questions in the Q and A, and I'm actually getting some text as well. Um, a lot of people find this very helpful, and um, hopefully, we are encouraging you all to visit. Um, and I do have a question uh, for each of you. So think about this. If you were to spend one perfect day in the mission, so let's start in the morning. How would you start it? And then how would you end it? So um, um, Eric, please tell us your suggestions. Sure. Uh, I will start, start out very slowly in the morning, taking a nice stroll down 24th Street looking at our beautiful murals that we have um you know stop by at a banderia to get some coffee and some pan dulce which is part of our, our culture here in the area uh take a stroll down to uh look at all our gift shops where you'll find a lot of uh items that are very culturally relevant to the area and to the many different countries in the area you can stop by at the balmy alley uh, look at all our wonderful murals a lot of history there go by for see the eyes you know take a tour You'll really learn more about the neighborhood taking those tours. Um, go down to Mini Park, which is a hidden jewel in, in, in the mission in our cultural district. It's that little park is surrounded by murals, colorful murals, uh, by Michael Reels, who was an artist who had Carlos Santana's, uh, uh, he created Carlos Santana's first, first uh, album cover uh, with one of his designs. So it's a very special little park. Uh, it has a, a, a tile, uh, Quetzalcoatl. Um, and and, and the, that image was created from its murals and it, and it was created onto the park. Um, and just, you know, take your time. Look at all the beautiful buildings that we have, the beautiful colorful buildings that we have. Talk to our people, visit our vendors on the street, talk to them. And uh, visit also the House of, of Rock on 25th and York. It's a very special single family home that has a mural completely covered in, um, in, in the history of Latin Rock. Excellent, bravo. Uh, Susanna, your turn. Oh, okay. So my perfect date in the mission would start at Red Cafe for one of the delicious breakfasts. Um, then I would walk over to either Garfield Park just to have a walk around and to really get my exercise on in you know around the neighborhood and then I would go definitely I would be meet uh, Eric at Balmy Alley <laughs> I love that alley the the murals the history and it's also um right next to where Mission Girls used to be so so I would love to be there um, and reminisce of all the times. Then maybe I'll, I'll grab a, a small coffee along the way in one of our cafeterias and definitely some pantus. And my favorites are the orejas. So I will have an oreja for sure. For lunch, I will probably stop at maybe La Palma or Espiga de Oro just for something small, nothing big. And then I would end my dinner at Tio Chilos with one of their marvelous uh, margaritas that they have there and just end the night uh, relax, listening to the sounds of the music, talking to the people, seeing the families go back home and, and really checking in with everybody. That is one of my favorite things in the mission is that wherever you walk, you find someone with a friendly smile and a story to tell. And, and that is definitely one of my favorite things, being able to connect with the humans that live and make our beautiful community. Um, Tracy, what would be your perfect day on 24th Street? Oh my God, the perfect day would be cruising in the lowrider the entire time. But <laughs> um, if the car was parked, I would start my day getting coffee at Rise and, and Grind on 22nd and Folsom walk to Cesar Chavez, say hi to all of my old co-workers and maybe, you know, check in with the school staff, see how they're doing, um, go eat breakfast at Sol y Luna. I'd have to run in and say hi to my boy Louie at La Reina Bakery and try to, you know, get eat a pan dulce with him. Then I'd go get my hair done because, you know, I can't be slipping on that with Claudia on 24th. And as soon as she finishes that, I would go next door and pick up some like earrings. I don't know if you can see my earrings like that. I'd go next door or across the street. I love spending money. Um, and then next door to that, I'd grab a Thai tea, walk down. Maybe I'm ready for lunch because, you know, my hair takes a little longer to dye these days. Um, 
go over to Tio Chilo's maybe, um, buy my meat for dinner. And then I'd probably walk out and see the tamales shop and grab some of those too. Cause you know, you never know, I might not want to cook. Um, and then I would go to the bank because I've spent all of my money. And then I might just settle on, hey, I want La Palma burritos. So I don't know that that's everything you could do in the mission. And during the whole time, I would be talking to everyone that I see and having a great time. That would be my day. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Rodrigo, re real quick, what would be your perfect day? Yeah. Okay. Um, Tima's Cafe on 24th and Harrison. I would start with the cafecito. And I love to people watch and talk to folks. So that's a great place for, for you know, all, people from all walks of life to, to sit down with and chat. And then I go to uh, 24th and South Finesse and take a picture of the Carnival mural. <laughs> then I go to Garfield Park, hang out a little bit, you know, watch some folks, talk to folks, go to artillery. Uh, you know, they have great art inside, uh, music, and find out, you know, what's going on in the neighborhood. For uh, Then go to Mission Cultural Center for Latino Arts, see the gallery. Uh, if possible, take a samba dance class and drum class. And then after I'm done sweating, walk my way down to El Nuevo Frutilandia for some delicious Puerto Rican Cuban comida. Awesome. That's, that's, those are great suggestions. And uh, George, let's finish it. Let's finish this out. What would be your uh -huh. suggestions? All right, for me, I'd wake up, I'd actually go to the 24th and cap uh, test site. I'll make sure I'm, you know, COVID free, get that within 20 minutes, make sure I'm all good. I'll go hang out, you know, enjoy some nice food here in the mission. Uh, say by, the by then it'd be like breakfast time, maybe get some uh, pan dulce and then stop by Tio Chilos because they also have amazing margaritas according to Susana so man, you know, <laughs> enjoy that and then um, I'd also probably take some pictures of the murals that I'm a photographer so you know I got to make sure I get all the colors um, maybe invite a friend to take some pictures with and then enjoy some dinner um, hmm, I don't even there's too many places to choose I don't know where to choose but have some dinner and then maybe go to the gray area watch Paseo Artistico enjoy some art um, stop, stop by uh, Acción Latina and say Hi to my friend Alexis and Tecolote, and you know, head home. Thank you, George. Um, by the way, there's a lot of great material in the mission for TikTokers and content creators. So definitely, yeah. you know, uh, shop and dine in the mission, but also you, you can add to your content. So um, thanks, George. So um, Susanna, we have a question from one of our guests and uh, Ben asked, what is something that the 24th Street Corridor needs to do to continue to thrive? Uh, what is your grand vision for maintaining the vibrancy of the mission? Well, uh, plans are always on our, on our horizons. We're always um, concocting and planning uh, at Calle 24. One of the things right now that we're focusing on is in the economic recovery because of the pandemic. As I said at the beginning, the, the Latino community was hit the worst by the pandemic, not only economically, but with health. So right now, like, like George said, we have a vaccine site on 24th and CAP and a testing site. So and making sure that it continues to operate and that it's well run so that we can continue to keep our, fa our families safe. Um, also, we want to, as the economic recovery happens, we want to continue to help our small businesses become more virtually um, present and understand more how to advertise and promote their businesses online so people can find them and come and 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 enjoy everything that we get to enjoy every day and last we're we're looking at our vendors and we're looking at our streets and how do we create um an environment where when you get off on 24th street that you immediately are transported to latin america so that is one of the long-term visions where whenever you get off on 24th and mission you will never be mistaken that you have you are in the latino cultural district Thank you very much. Uh, and it's asked of me many times, how can I help the community? There are many ways you can help. Number one, all these attendees are with us today. You are helping just by being here and learning about the community. Because once we learn and know each other, th there's uh, empathy that develops and understanding. 
So the other way you can support the uh, community is there's lots of nonprofits in the mission. Eight uh, volunteering opportunities, sure. So go to those in here today. Uh, make sure to dine and all certificates uh, for yourself, for my gift certificates, that's supporting small business. Um, and um, so many other ways, even posting on social media, like you said before, that's helping as well. So thank you. So now um, we have an opportunity. Now is the moment you've all been waiting for. Franco Finn will announce the winner of Take It Away, Franco. Okay, fabulous. Let's do it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Like I said, a pair of tickets uh, anywhere Alaska Airlines flies. And remember, there's no restrictions, blackout dates. This is good for not only book by the end of uh, another year from now, but you could also travel a year after that. So it's almost like two years you can use it. So whenever you feel, you know, uh, good and travel and, and things are safer, you know, uh, like I said, we're one of the safest airlines. Please come on down and fly to your favorite destination. We've got new stops this fall uh, and beyond. So with that said, let me get a little virtual drum roll, please. The winner of these two round trip tickets are, and let me see here, and my randomizer has picked Rosine Garcia. Rosine Garcia. Congratulations. Virtual round of applause. Fist bumps to you, Rosina. Uh, Rosine Garcia, thank you so much. We will uh, notify you and we will mail those vouchers, FedEx, and you can book your destination and hope you go somewhere far. Congratulations. All right, this is exciting. Congratulations, Rosine. Uh, so now uh, all the good things must come to a, an end, as they say. So it's been a fantastic discussion, um, as you can the Phoenix is a symbol of San Francisco and our city is alive and well. It's a newfound optimism and people really want to rediscover the city. Uh, that's why we want to highlight these cultural districts and um, the small businesses and the cultural institutions that are, exist within these corridors. And um, please stay tuned for the next three months for over the next three months, we'll be highlighting some other cultural districts too. So wait for the follow-up email from us. And it uh, looks like we're going into some great, great weather. Um, so go out, enjoy, enjoy some great food, some warm hospitality in the mission and enjoy all, all the uh, spots, the evening spots as well. So make sure to shop local and shop small. Thank you very much, everybody.